It is good <laughs> to be here. You're excited. John Walker, good to see you. We are so excited to have Ryan Dice here today. How excited are you for Ryan Dice? You know, there are very few people. I spend a lot of time on the road listening to the experts in marketing. And there are very few people that I can listen to again and again and again. And one of those individuals is Ryan Dice. Ryan Dice, as you know, is the CEO and founder of Digital Marketer. One of the very few consultants we hire personally at Infusionsoft to bring him in and say, Ryan, tell us what's working and what's not working. Tell us how we as a company need to be successful. Ryan gets it, understands it, and executes it at a very high level. Ryan turned to me before and he goes, hey, do you want to give them a pretty clear idea on what I'm speaking on today? And in my mind, I thought, Ryan, we don't care because Ryan dies. We want to know just what's happening and how we can be more successful. And as brilliant as he is as a marketer and as a CEO, he's an even better person an incredible devoted husband and father to his children, an all-around successful person. I am so excited to introduce the great Ryan Dice. Please stand up and welcome Ryan Dice. All right. There's nothing in life quite like a... Uh, a Chad Kirby introduction. Uh, I truly wish it for all of you uh, that one, he, uh, you would be so fortunate as to uh, a, as to have such an introduction. Hey, really quickly before I get started, do we have any uh, agencies in the room? Uh, Marcus told me that I, I need to say something. So uh, agencies, uh, Infusionsoft certified partners in the room, in particular digital agencies. We got any digital marketer certified partners in the room? We've got at least a couple, right? Cool. Um, we are doing a special uh, kind of happy hour um, I believe the technical term is a shindig tonight. Um, it's at 4.30. I have absolutely no idea where it is. Um, I trust they'll tell me before 4.30. But, uh, but we're doing something uh, for, for uh, agencies, uh, for Infusionsoft certified partners. Uh, we kind of want to get to know you guys. It's a big initiative that we're making this year at Digital Marketer. Um, really, we want to work with more agencies. We realize that as, as good as our stuff is, and we feel like it's pretty dang good, um, it, as we can build out our own partner network, uh, it, it'll make uh, really the things that we teach that much more effective because when a small business owner invests in our training or anything else that we teach, um, we can point them in the direction of somebody who can actually get it implemented uh, for them. Because I know one of the biggest questions we get at Digital Marketer is, hey, can you guys just do this for me? And the answer is no. Uh, one of the things that makes us different at Digital Marketer, because yes, we do uh, teach digital marketing, we do have digital marketing trainings and certifications, but the big thing that makes us different from, I think, a lot of the other people that are out there teaching and talking about this stuff is we actually do it. So I own a number of businesses in a number of different markets selling literally everything from uh, makeup brushes to crossbows, a whole lot of knives and sharp, pokey, stabby things. Um, really the, the full gambit, B2B, B2C. So we have those companies, and, and in general, we're doing work for those companies. But we don't want to leave our students hanging. We don't leave our clients hanging. When somebody invests in one of our trainings, um, we want to make sure that if they need help, if they, if they want to get it done for them, that we can point them in the direction of folks who can get that done. So uh, that's why we would love to meet and hang out with you. If you're, if you're a doer, if you're an implementer, if you're a trainer yourself, then we'd love to chat with you. So 4.30 uh, is when we're doing a little happy hour. Again, I don't know the, the, the location, but there's a couple of gentlemen standing in the back right there. Um, they're super sexy, uh, ridiculously good looking, much taller than I am. Uh, we got Kyle and Steven back there. Will you guys wave again and look back at them? Cool. They do know the location. Uh, they've got little cards and stuff that not only get you in to our party, but also get you a couple free drinks on us. Okay? So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that because I knew if I didn't do it first that I would absolutely forget. Okay. Turn the page, commercial over. Let's talk about offer creation. All right, let's talk about creating an offer. Now, I know that uh, I talk a lot about, you know, marketing and traffic and conversion, but I'll tell you, if you don't have an amazingly great offer that people really, really want, you can drive all the traffic in the world to it that you want, and it's not going to matter. 
In fact, I would argue that the better your marketing is, okay, the better you are at marketing, but the crappier you're offered, just the faster you're going to convince people that you suck, right? The faster you're going to expose people to something that they don't want, and the faster you are going to get disregarded as a brand. I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I want to show you how to craft a perfect offer. A per perfect offer that makes people say, okay, shut up, just please take my money. I want to give you an example of, of where this happened to me personally. How many of you guys know what this is? Yeah, have we got any other children of the 90s in here? Okay. Um, this is the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System Classic Edition, also known as My Childhood in Someone's Hand. Uh, this is simply the, the most amazing thing that has ever been created. Um, this is right up there, I would argue, with the artificial heart. Okay? That's how meaningful this is to me. And when this came out, I, I freaked. I was like, I, I instantly know what it is, I instantly get it, and I instantly want it. I mean, and I, and I remember the article where, when, when I first read about this, I think it was on Mashable or TechCrunch or something like that, and I remember scrolling through the comments with other lunatics just like me who were equally excited, and I kept seeing this posted. How many of you guys have seen this meme? Seen this meme, shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. Wouldn't you like for someone to say this about you? Wouldn't you like for someone to say this about your product, your service? I got it, I get it, I understand it, I want it. That's what I want to talk about today, exactly how we get that. Because the reality is, when a perfect offer is made, people buy. Okay, when a perfect offer is made, people buy. It's just how it works. You don't even have to be that great of a salesperson. It doesn't require any manipulation, no tricks, no woo, these are not the droids you're looking for kind of things. No, none of that, right? No mind tricks and, and no hard selling. I didn't have to, to go through a 45-minute video sales letter to decide that I wanted the NES Classic, that I wanted this video game system. I knew that this was something that I wanted. It was a perfect offer. All right? it, was a, it was a perfect offer. So the key is to give people what they actually want. The key is to give people what they actually want. And I'm going to tell you what that is. Because I firmly believe that in life, in this world, everyone wants the exact same thing. Everyone wants the exact same thing. And I'll tell you what that is. First though, I'm making one massive assumption. I'm making one massive assumption. I'm going to assume that your product is actually good. That your service is actually good. I'm going to assume that when people buy from you and they give you money, that they're happy that they did that. Okay, is that a fair assumption? Do you guys seriously, is your stuff good? Right? It's, I think we need to remember this. I think we need to remember this because there's a lot of people out there whose stuff isn't very good. They, they, they really are terrible. Um, if nothing else, I want you to win so you can beat them. We have one, we have a number of beliefs at Digital Marketer. If you've ever been to our website, scroll down to the bottom and, and watched our, our We Believe statements. We believe a lot of things, but one of the things that we believe is we believe that the best should win. We believe that the best deserve to win. The best product, the best service deserves to win, not the best marketer. Okay, the best product, the best service uh, deserves to win. I made a statement kind of in passing yesterday um, when I was speaking with a group of startup founders, and I think people were surprised to hear me say that, I, but it's true. And it's this, um, marketing and advertising is the price you pay for an, for an inadequate brand. Marketing and advertising is the price that you pay for an inadequate brand. That sounds strange coming from Someone who owns a website called Digital Marketer is here to talk to you about digital marketing. I freely admit that. But it's the reality. Now, in the beginning, right, in the beginning it's essential. Because in the beginning you don't have a brand, you don't have anything. And a logo isn't a brand, right? You gotta let people know who you are, what you stand for, what you do. So, tell me if you've ever said to yourself, I know my product or service is great. I know it's great. Heck, we've had people who have invested in it, people who have given us money, and they've liked it. I showed it to my mom and she thought it was the greatest thing in the world, right? How many of you, you know your product or service is great, but your customers just don't get it? Anybody else in this room thought that before? I know my product or service is great, they just don't get it. And you're thinking, ah, the problem is they're just stupid. So what I need to do is make everyone on planet Earth smarter and then I'll be able to sell my product or service. 
Hopefully you don't actually think that. That's pretty irrational, right? What we need to, to ask ourselves, right, is how do we make them get it? How do, our, how do we articulate our value in such a way that they say like I did when I saw the NES classic, okay, shut up, just take my money. How do we do that? That's exactly our goal. That's exactly what I want to do. By the time we're finished, you'll know the exact positioning and word-for-word -word messaging you need to craft a perfect offer that gets you more sales. Then, then you have permission to amplify that message through marketing and advertising. But absent this, absent your positioning, absent your messaging, it's impossible to have a brand. All right? Absent your positioning, your messaging, it's impossible to convert eyeballs into money. So let's talk about how we get that. Now, admittedly, Admittedly, it's a little bit like trying to teach somebody how to do, how to paint, right? There is an art to this, right? Any of you guys ever watched like Bob Ross, right? Love that. He's like, oh, it's really, really simple. You just take the paintbrush and you do it this way and look, it's a freaking tree. Has anybody actually ever tried to do that? <laughs> I got the same paint, same brush, same canvas, no afro, mind you, but absent that, I don't believe that that's a, a variable that really makes that big a difference. Absent that, I should be able to pull it off, but it's hard. Right, so I remember I saw this meme. So here's how you draw an owl. I know this is small, so I'll read it. Step one is you draw two circles. Everybody see that? Feel free if you want to, to begin drawing. I'm going to teach you all how to draw, draw an owl. Okay, two circles, one for the head, one for the body. Step two is you just draw the rest of the damn owl. <laughs> right? Simple. That's how you do it. And admittedly, offer creation has been a bit like that. People have said, you know, how are you able to come up with these new offers? I don't know, I guess I'm just awesome. You know, not helpful or honest or accurate in any way, shape, or form. So what I've been doing over the last year is really unpacking. Unpacking what is the perfect offer? When, when we have managed to create an offer that says, okay, shut up, just take my money, what did we do? What did we get right? And when we failed miserably, and I don't know about you guys, but I learned a lot more from my failures and my successes. When we fail miserably, where do we miss? What is the perfect offer? Well, the perfect offer defined is the right product at the right price presented to the right person with the right messaging at the exact right moment. Right product, right price, right person, right messaging, right moment. Product, price, person, messaging, moment. I don't know how to, I can't give you a product. Hopefully you walked in the door with something to sell or at least an idea of something that you could sell on behalf of you or, or your company. Hopefully you have a product and hopefully you've done some market research, some testing, and you've been able to identify the right price. Hopefully you also know your who. You've identified your, your ideal audience. Hopefully you know that. In my experience working with, with uh, marketers and business owners and branding experts, small companies, big companies, most of them tend to do pretty okay at the first three. They got a product, they know how to price it, they know generally who's gonna buy it. That fourth one and the fifth one is where they, they, things kinda of go a little bit sideways. So that's where I really wanna focus. And I wanna start off talking about messaging. All right, I wanna talk about messaging. And the first step to identifying your ideal messaging is to identify your prospect's ideal after. Now, to explain this, I wanna cover the one thing, I, I hinted at this earlier, the one thing that everyone is always buying. No matter what you're selling, product, service, physical, digital, I don't care what it is, all of you in this room, if you're selling anything at all, are in the exact same business. You're all selling the exact same thing. Do you know what that is? Transformation. All of you are in the transformation business. You don't sell products or services. You don't sell widgets or information. You sell vehicles. You sell vehicles that transport human beings from a less desirable before state to a more desirable after state. That is the business that all of you are in. 100% of you. I don't care what you sell. If you sell consulting to small businesses, well, then you transport small businesses from a less desirable before state where they're not getting all the sales and leads that they want into a more desirable after state where they are getting more leads and sales. If you sell spoons, 
You're transporting someone from a less desirable before state where they're forced to eat cereal with a fork, which is just insanity, right? To a more desirable before state where they can now scoop the cereal, milk and all into their mouth, right? Whatever it is that you sell, you are selling transformation. And the sooner we understand that, the better we can get at marketing, the better we can get about talking about our products. This is how we keep from talking about our features. It's how we keep from talking about our features. So here's what I mean. I want you to imagine right now, and if you've seen me do this before, it's still worth, worth writing it down. It's still worth thinking this through. I want you to imagine your customer right now. This is them, this, are, this is Mr. and Mrs. Before, and this is Mr. and Mrs. After. Same person, but they have changed. You could see before, they're kind of miserable. They're in a less desirable state. After, they're thrilled. What's the difference? They've met you. They've met you, they've consumed your product. They've consumed your service. You have intersected their life and you have improved them and made them better for it. Never forget, guys, and this is a bit of, I get it mildly soapboxy, but never forget that as a business, your job is not to make money. Your job is to improve the lives of other human beings. And for that, they gladly will give you their money. But if you ever believe that you're in the business of merely extracting value, you're not going to be around for very long. It's going to take one person to come, come along and care just a little bit more than you, and they're going to take all the business. And they're going to deserve it. Remember what I said before, we believe at Digital Marketing that the best should win. The best product or service, the people that care the most, the people that can influence the greatest degree of transformation. So never forget, we're all in the transformation business. That's the product that we produce. It's not the product or service that we sell. The product that we produce, that we manufacture, is better human beings. Human beings in a better state. Leaving people better than when, when we found them. All right, so what are we talking about here? If we're in the business of transporting people from this before state to the after state, then what is marketing, what is copywriting, what is messaging? Well, a great sales message, it simply articulates this shift. It articulates the transformation from the before state to the after state. That's all any great message ever does. I don't care what you're selling. I don't care if you're selling computers or if you're selling junk removal. Every great sales message simply articulates the shift from the before state to the after state. Let's look at some examples. Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Pretty good ad. How many of you guys have ne had never seen that ad before? Wow. Now, to get it, it requires that you've read a book or two, one in particular, but you get the basic idea, right? Many people don't realize that Apple has kind of been selling the exact same thing since day one. That commercial was directed by Ridley Scott. It aired one time during the Super Bowl. One time during the Super Bowl. And that was where they introduced Macintosh. What didn't you see in that ad? A computer? You didn't see a computer. Is Apple in the computer business? Uh, does anybody remember when they changed the name from Apple Computer Company to just Apple? Because they wanted to say that we're not in the computer business. We're now in the mobile business, the phone business. Why can Apple, if they decided to tomorrow, come out with a car? Because what's the business that Apple is really in? Let me give you a hint. What's Apple selling here? They're selling iPods. That's the product. What's the transformational benefit that they're suggesting? That Because you could barely even see the iPod. Fun, joy, dancing. Yeah, what else? You have friends now, whereas you didn't have friends before. 
because you have headphones in your ears. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to. It just has to be accurate. What else? Freedom. There's a big one that I haven't. Uniqueness. I would argue that from day one, and if you think about the ad that I just showed you, from day one, Apple has been selling people their own individuality. From day one. Anybody remember when the iPod first came out, when every single earbud on planet Earth, what the color of them were? Black. All earbuds were black. That was the color, going all the way back to the Sony Walkman, right? Put the headphones over. They've always been black. Apple said, we're going to make ours white. Why? Because it's different. Because you're an individual. Apple has always been in the transformation business. They've always sold products that transformed us from one of the herd to an individual that's cool, hip, and with it. Anybody remember any other Apple commercials that were along those same theme? How about, I'm a Mac, and I'm a PC, right? They've always sold us our individuality and our coolness. Kind of gets tough, though, when you sell individuality, and now you're, like, big, and everybody has it. But good problem to have. Here's another service, Plastic. Plastic.com. You don't have to know what, it, what this service does, but what's the after that plastic delivers? How many of you would love to do that on a day, uh, any given day? It's, it's the afternoon, the sun's coming in through the window, and she's just kicked back, sitting on the floor, back up against the wall or a radiator, sipping on a cup of coffee. How many of you would love to have that experience of just utter relief? Complete joy and bliss. Now, how is this woman able to achieve this state of just absolute bliss? Well, she doesn't have to write checks anymore to the babysitter. Think of how horrible that was. Right? But this is what we want to buy. We want to buy magic. We want to buy magic. We want to be transformed. Now, they've got on there, never write a check again. Pay your child care, your chef, your landscaper, your whatever, buy credit card even if they don't accept credit cards. It's a service that allows you to pay people via credit card even if they don't have their own merchant account. But now the visual is, it's going to help me achieve more bliss. It's speaking to the after. It's not a picture of the product, it's a picture of the after. Uh, I learned this from a friend of mine, Donald Miller, who's going to be here speaking, I believe, tomorrow. If you're not in that session, you're crazy and hate money. Um, what about this? Brand yourself. Look great when employers, clients, and even dates Google you. What I love about this is if you're a guy and you're a business person, that could be you. I want to look like that guy. Look at him with his amazing salt and pepper hair and that crazy cheek bone. I want to be that guy, but I'm not. Or if you're a female and you want to look great even when dates Google you, maybe, oh, I want to look great when that guy Googles me. You see how it kind of takes on its own stick figure type mentality? Incidentally, um, let me go back a couple of steps. What are, what are these called? Silhouettes. Did you know that when human, as human beings, when we see a silhouette or a stick figure, we project ourselves upon it? So when you're using your messaging, make sure that you don't get overly detailed and specific, or it becomes a story about you instead of a story about them. This is our, uh, one of our companies, True Conversion. It's easy to double sales when you know exactly what your customers want. And here you've got a woman, arms in the air, really, really excited. And any of you who work at a computer would love to have that feeling, looking at your stats. Woo! Everything's up. We're showing people in their ideal after state. We're describing their ideal after state. This is one of my favorites, 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Junk removal service. Goodbye junk, hello relief. Goodbye junk, hello relief. So let's talk. This is on their website. They've got a little sound-free video playing, but look at this guy. This is our after. Look, his wife actually likes him. <laughs> Unlike this guy, who's clearly in the doghouse, because look at all that crap. Oh, but look, here comes... Note that it doesn't even stop. Magical thinking. Boom, junk is gone. You awkward high five. Let's decide what we're going to do, guys. Yay! He's back out of the doghouse, and then you got this woman, truck pulls away, 
and now we get to see this woman in her ideal after state. Yes, because all that junk is gone. Speak to the ideal after. Stop talking about your product. Nobody freaking cares. Your product is merely a vehicle. It is a vessel. It is a shell into which their ideal after can be uh, carefully packaged up and transported into the future with them on it. That is what we talk about. We stop talking about our products and services. We start talking about our people and how we change them. That's the key to a good message. If right now you're talking about your product a lot and you know it's good, you know it's great, and everybody's like, yeah, cool, whatever, I don't freaking get it, it's because you're talking about your product and not the ideal after. One of my favorite examples, if you've been following me for any length of time, you've heard me use this example. I love it, it's mildly PG-13, I'll apologize in advance, but in the 1980s, a woman named Nora Hayden published this book called Astrological Love. It didn't sell particularly well, it went out of print. Did anybody in this room buy this book, Astrological Love? Did anybody wake up this morning wishing that they could learn how to love more astrologically? <laughs> Only about nobody ever has. That's why the book didn't sell particularly well. But to the author's credit, the same author, nearly identical content, republished the same book some years later under a slightly better title that I would argue speaks slightly better to the desired end result of the market, which was how to satisfy a woman every time and have her beg for more. Now, which one speaks to the ideal after of, frankly, both parties, right? Now, we can laugh and we can giggle. This went on to be a number one New York Times bestseller. How many of you bought this book? Just kidding, you don't have to admit it. <laughs> same content, same author, speaking to the desired end result. So that's step one. You must know your prospects after. What is their ideal after state? Where do they want to go? Where are they hoping your product or service can transport them before we get to this? We're going to get very tactical, but if you screw up that first part, or if you go, oh, that's a little kind of warm and fuzzy, and I don't want to deal with that. Just give me the specific words I need to say. You're going to mess it up. What is your prospect's ideal after? If you want a little hint, the after and the shift from the before state to the after state can be really described in four or five ways, what do they have before that they don't have after? Or what don't they have before that they now have after? It's the simplest, most obvious, that's features. We could also look at things like their emotional state. Their emotional state, what's their emotional state before and their emotional state after? Goodbye junk, hello relief, that was an emotional pitch. That was an emotional pitch. Emotion is big. Also average day. What's their average day like before? What's their average day like after? Before, every single Saturday, my wife is yelling at me and is on me because I need to get rid of all the junk that's in the garage. After, she actually kisses and hugs me, right? If you've to been told that you need to, to tell more stories and bring more narrative into your messaging and into your copy, that's how you do it. Tell stories of transformation. They're always the most interesting ones anyway. Right? Nobody wants to watch a movie that starts out like, Bob woke up one day to find that, well, everything was just fine. <laughs> he progressed through the day. It was a Tuesday, a day much like any other. He went to bed and everything was just fine. That's freaking boring. There's no conflict. There's no change. Right? Tell a story of transformation. And then fourthly, when we're thinking before and after, status. Apple has always been in the status business. They've always sold status. What do you have before? What's your emotional state before versus after? What's your average day like? What's the narrative? What's the stories that you tell about yourself and then others tell about you before versus after? And then what's your status before and your status after? The simplest one that will give you the biggest bang for the buck is just to drop from merely talking about have and to just talk about the emotional state. What's their emotional state before you meet them? What's the emotional state? Are they frustrated? Are they sad? Are they angry? Are they generally okay, but they'd like to be better? What's their emotional state before? And what's their emotional state after? If you communicated with your customers, you know that. All right, let's get into step two. You'll see why I spent so much time talking about that in just a second. So what can you say in as few words as possible that will make your prospects say, please take my money now? That's a question that we need to answer, and I've got a... Pretty simple uh, answer for it. I call it the 30-second sales pitch. The 30-second sales pitch, I'm going to give you a template. Uh, it's going to show line by line. If you insist on taking a picture, I recommend that you wait until the end. Or you're going to take a bunch of them and it'll get irritating. So let me just save you on that, okay? Here's the 30-second sales pitch. You know how emotion it is 
when, insert before. You know how frustrating it is when you got a pile full of junk and your wife's on your case and you just want to go play golf, but she's saying, why are you going to go play golf when you already have 15 spare golf sets in the garage? I'm not saying I've ever had this conversation. I'm just saying I've had that exact same conversation. You know how blank it is when this before is in, when you're in the state of this, when you're in this before state. Now we're going to empathy. Well, I've been there too. We hear you. We found the same to be true. And that's why I or we, whoever you are, created this. That's why we built this. That's why we did this. And once you have it, once you've completed it, as a client, as a member, once you call, once you come into our store, once you book an appointment, we're implying action. We're implying ownership. We're moving them forward into the process. You'll have the after. That's a 30-second sales pitch. And if you talk fast like I do, you can get it done in 20. If you guys want to write and craft an elevator speech, there you go. You want to write a headline and know what should go at the top of your page? A condensed version of that, maybe just speaking to the after, there you go. You want to equip your sales team with something to say when people say, what do you guys do? There you go. There is the messaging, but if you note, it follows exactly the structure that I talked about before. It speaks transformationally. You know how frustrating it is when you're in this before state? Hey, we were there too. We found that to be true as well. That's why we created this. When you have it, just like we do, we're going to transport you to this after state. You know how you pine away for your childhood? You know, the days when it was simple and easy. The days when to actually make those cartridges work, you had to go... <laughs> 90s kids, you know what I'm talking about. Put it in. Yay. Right? Would you like to buy some of your childhood back for just $84? Yes, I would. Very, very simple pitch. You can do this sometimes in just a single image. You can do this with a video. This could be storyboarded. It has movement. Most messaging doesn't. Most messaging, talk, most messaging just talks at people. It describes. It doesn't articulate any transformation. Let's talk timing. Step three. Step three is to architect your ideal sales conversation. Architect your ideal sales conversation. An ideal sales conversation, in case you were wondering, is a sales conversation where the answer, where the result is not in doubt. It's when you're in the zone. It's when you're talking to just that right person at just that right moment in just that right place. They're saying all the right things. You're getting all the buying signals, and you know this is a laydown. That's an ideal sales conversation. The best example that I can imagine for that in my own personal life was when I proposed to my wife. Okay? How many of you guys have proposed or been proposed to? Only about nine of you. That's a very sad group. I'm sorry. A lot of single people, though, come to our mixer tonight at 4.30. We'll see what we can do. Seriously, but if you've been in that moment, right, it's scary, right? I remember I, I was terrified. I was terrified, though, because of the gravity of what was going on. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. I knew, I knew this was a, one of those watershed moments in my life. After this moment, nothing would ever be the same again. And it, and it hasn't been. It's, been. it's been great. It's been, it's been wonderful in, every way I, in ways I couldn't have even hoped for. But in that moment, I was utterly terrified. But you know what? I wasn't terrified over what she was going to say. I knew she was going to say yes. Because for months prior to that, she'd been like sending me mixtapes with like going to the chapel on it. She's subscribing to like Brides Magazine. She's sending me pictures of diamond engagement rings that she likes and ones that she told me if I were to buy, she would not say yes. She, any of you guys remember when the not.com first came out? She signed us up for the not.com before we were engaged. I remember getting an email in my inbox one day congratulating me on, on the pending nuptials. I had no idea I was getting married on that particular date. She just freaking guessed. So you can imagine my surprise had I been in this moment down on one knee proposing to this woman and she's like, where is this coming from? I don't understand. Where did you ever get the idea that I would want to marry you? Oh, I don't know, psycho from like everything the last 12 months, right? I, could, I would rightfully be very upset, right? I would rightfully be upset. So selling and ideal selling is not so much about how do I come up with the perfect clothes, how do I say just the right thing that's going to get them to buy? No, no, no. It's about engineering more of these. 
It's about engineering the situations where you know what they're going to say. You know what they're going to say. That's an ideal sales conversation. So we're basically asking ourselves, how can we make the sale the obvious next step? When I'm down on one knee proposing to Emily, that was the obvious next step in our relationship. We've been dating for a couple of years. I had met the parents. All that good stuff, right? It was the obvious next step to a process that she was complicit to all along. At no point was she like, by the way, I hate you, right? All along, everything was going great, right? So how can we make the sale the obvious next step? Better yet, how can we make it seem like the whole pesky thing is their idea? Even best still, how do we structure an offer so that it actually is their idea? So that the sale occurring is their idea. They're asking us if they can give us their money, not the other way around. Wouldn't you agree that that's a much more fun and interesting way to sell? I can assure you that it is. So here's how you pre-engineer an ideal sales conversation. Step one, imagine it. Or better yet, if you've been there, you don't have to imagine it. Go back. Have, have any of you guys ever experienced the sheer unbridled joy of a laydown sale? Right? Yeah. When you're talking to just that right person in just that right place you, and you're in the midst of this conversation, you know this person's going to buy. You just, like, just don't ask too soon. Don't get freaking weird about it. Like, try to just play. You're like, play cool. Play cool. Right? <laughs> So if you've experienced that, that lay down sale, then reverse engineer it. Where, who was there? Was it you? Was it somebody on your team? Who were you talking to? What kind of person were they? Man, woman? Does that not matter? You know, were you talking to a business person? Were you talking to kind of a mid-level executive? Were you talking to an individual contributor? Were you talking to the CEO? Who was there? And then what were you talking about? And that last one, the what? of the conversation, that's the biggie. Because getting, you know, showing up in the right place, talking to the right people, that's easy, all right? There's events like these where you could sponsor if this is the crowd that you wanna target, that you can go on Facebook and buy all the advertising you want, you can go buy it from Google, the traffic and the eyeballs and the attention, the awareness, it's available for purchase. But getting it to initiate the right conversation topic so that this whole pesky thing becomes their idea, well, that's where we need a little bit of extra magic. So, step two is we wanna brainstorm entry point offers that will initiate that ideal sales conversation. For me, with my wife, it was, hey, you wanna meet up and grab lunch at Wendy's on Thursday? Literally, our first date, I took her to Wendy's because Wendy's took the dining card, so my parents paid for that instead of me. That's how romantic I was. But that's what got the ball rolling. Hey, let's just meet up and grab lunch. Let's just meet up and grab lunch. If you are in a committed relationship right now, I want you to think about something. It's a little bit bizarre. There was a moment in time where this person that you share all of your most intimate moments with was an absolute stranger to you. You didn't know them and they didn't know you. And yet, there you are, doing whatever voodoo you do so well, right? How does that happen? Well, it happens the same way all relationships happen. The same is true in business. There's a time when they're strangers and they become friends and so on and so forth. I'm not going to explain the birds and the bees to you guys. So, but it does usually start with an entry point offer. Hey, let's go grab some coffee. We'll show, talk more about that. And now we advertise and promote our entry point offers and let the conversations begin. If in your marketing you're promoting the final product, you're like the person who walks into the bar and says, hey, you're welcome. I'm single, good looking, and of means um, I have arrived who would like to marry me. That's freaking weird, y'all. And yet, if you were to go and look at your advertising that you're running on Facebook, driving people wherever the heck it is that you're driving them, that's what you're doing. You're doing the digital equivalent of that and then wondering why nobody wants to go out with you. It's because you're a freaking weirdo, right? You're, you're, you're kind of pushing a little, little too far. And I don't mean you personally, just the person running your marketing. No, it, it's, we fail to remember that business is still just a relationship. That's all that it is. It's not B2B. It's not B2C. It's H2H, human to human. Humans helping other humans. But when we have an entry point offer, now we got something that'll work. So this is a question you got to answer. Before you, can, before you really buy any ad, have a good answer to this question. What's an entry point offer that will ultimately lead your prospect to initiate an ideal sales conversation? What's your, hey, let's grab some coffee? What's your, hey, let's meet up for lunch at Wendy's? Typically, an entry point offer is going to have one or both of these things. We're gonna be looking for that little micro commitment. We're gonna be looking for a commitment of time. We're gonna be looking for a commitment of money. 
This is how human beings show commitment. Time and money. Time and money. This is how human beings show commitment. If you architect an entry point offer, it should have one or both of these. Who remembers this? 13 records of tapes for just $1. Prior to this, it was, they still got you on their list? You're still getting them? Good. I'm not suggesting, incidentally, that you get a little bit of money and then put somebody into some type of forced continuity thing that they can't possibly get out of. That's wrong. But it was a pretty magical offer because even prior to it being a dollar, it was tape a penny to a postcard. How many of you guys remember that? Tape a penny. But make no mistake, when you taped that penny to that postcard, the relationship was fundamentally changed. You were now a customer. You had made a commitment. It was only a penny, but the commitment was made. The commitment was made. So people show commitment in their wallet, and people show commitment in their calendar. When somebody subscribes, when somebody signs up, when they register for your webinar, when they register for your webinar, that in and of itself is not a commitment. It's not until they show up for that webinar that they're making a true commitment. It's not until they show up for the webinar that they're making a true commitment. At Digital Marketer, uh, our kind of main flagship membership is called Digital Marketer Lab. We got any lab members in the house? Cool. Got a couple lab members in the house. We don't sell lab. It's $40 a month. It's not like a giant commitment, but it's enough of a commitment that we don't sell it. You can find it. If you hunt around, you can find it. But if you're hunting around, what are you giving me some of? Your time. So you can hunt around and you can find it, but in general, we don't directly promote lab. It's too much of an ask. But we'll sell you a small little execution plan for just seven bucks, a little bit of money. And then once you've got that one little execution plan, that one little report for just $7, we'll say, hey, if you like this, you're going to love being a member of Lab. we got like 38 more of these. And we'll hang out occasionally. You want a trial? Yeah, sure. Want to grab some coffee? This is fun. We should go get dinner sometime. It's all just relationships. If you're finding that people aren't buying what you're selling, you're probably asking for too much too soon. Get yourself an entry point offer. What's your let's go get some coffee? So for a case study, let's talk about Digital Marketer HQ. So Digital Marketer HQ, this is our highest level membership. This is where we package all of our trainings and certifications in one area. This is generally designed for teams to go through. So if you want to train your team using the same certifications and classes that we use at Digital Marketer to train our team, there you go. All our certifications, one place, team training, Digital Marketer HQ. There was just one little problem. When we first went out to the market with this, no one wanted it. At least it didn't seem like anyone wanted it. And so in, in my frustration, uh, this was at Traffic and Conversion Summit, not, not last year, but 2016. So Traffic and Conversion Summit 2016, on the third day of our event, the last day of our event, I stood at, at our booth and I just talked to people. I just talked to people and I said, you know, tell me about yourself. How big is your team? Let's have a conversation. And then I'd tell them about Digital Marketer HQ. And what I found is when they said, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of getting started. I don't really have a team. Um, kind of playing with some ideas of things that I want to promote. Only about no, none of those people were interested in this. But when somebody walked up to the booth and I said, hey, how you doing? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Ryan. Um, just out of curiosity, how big is your sales and marketing team? Oh, it's around three to five people. Okay, cool. Are you interested in kind of up-leveling or maybe growing that team in the next little bit? Yeah, that's why I'm here. Okay, cool. Well, you want to just use our tools and trainings to, to train and equip that team so you don't have to fool with it? Yes. Okay, here's the form. Conversion rate was through the roof. When I had the right conversation with the right person in the right place about the right topic, it worked. So the ideal sales conversation at Digital Marketer HQ, if some of you guys uh, swing by the Digital Marketer uh, booth, you may be privileged enough to have this very conversation. Um, I admit that I'm getting a little bit meta here, but I think, it, I think it's worth understanding. Here it is for Digital Marketer HQ. Whoa, hey, whoa, stop it, stop, stop it. I'm not touching anything. I'm not doing it. You gotta want it. Shh, pay no mind. You, you see that I'm going back to the uh, owl which is one of my favorites. Oh, well, we really zipped through those quickly. I know we got started late, but I promise I'm going to finish on time, guys. Fast 
Going, 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 and seeing. There it is. Okay. Since you're planning to build or grow an internal digital marketing team, would you like to use our tools to streamline and automate the training and onboarding process? If I was able to have that conversation, then I knew that more times than not, the answer was yes. It's like a wedding proposal. If I was able to respond in that sense, hey, since you're planning to build and you know, build or grow an internal, internal digital marketing team, would you like to use our tools to streamline and automate the training and onboarding process? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, then let's do it. Now, this was easy to do when people walked up to me face to face and I said, hey, how big's your marketing team? Ah, about three to five people. Are you looking to grow it? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, since you're planning to build or grow an internal digital marketing, like, it, when I was having the conversation face to face, it was easy. But how do we take this out of this world and into the digital space, right? This is where the entry point offers come in. So we published reports. We published a hiring guide. So we've got the hiring guide on, on how to hire a content marketing manager how to hire a content marketing team, right? And when somebody registers for that, we're able to say, you know, hey, you should check out this cool thing called Digital Marketer HQ, right? But we don't just say, check this out. We say something like this. You just downloaded one of our hiring guides. Therefore, the obvious next step is, would you like to use our tools to train and onboard that person once you hire them? Incidentally, who initiated the conversation? They did. I am simply continuing a conversation that they began. Do you guys see the difference? I'm continuing a conversation that they began. They were the ones that sent me the mixtape with going to the chapel when they downloaded one of our hiring guides. So that's cool, let's do a webinar. The title of the webinar is how to structure and build a modern digital marketing team. Now that's not a particularly clever title, but it's safe to say that if someone is registering and attending a webinar on how to structure and build a modern digital marketing team, that they probably want to know how to, oh, I don't know, structure and build a modern digital marketing team. So because of that, we're able to say, you just signed up for a webinar on how to build an in-house digital marketing team. Now that you know how to structure and build that team, would you like to use our, our tools to make it even easier? The entry point offer informs intent. The entry point offer informs those things, the entry point offer is what allows you to pick up the conversation and take it to its next logical conclusion, its obvious next step. We also have a job board at Digital Marketer. We have a job board. So people, if they're looking for digital marketing jobs, they can go and apply for them there. But if you're a, a company and you want to hire, add people to your digital marketing team, we have that. It's at digitalmarketer.com, job board, link at the top if any of you guys want to post some jobs. The main reason we do this, though, full disclosure, so we could say, hey, you just posted an open digital marketing position on our job board. I don't know, going on a limb here, guessing you're looking to grow your in-house digital marketing team. The obvious next step is, would you like to use our tools to train and onboard that person once you have them? I don't have to wonder, do they want to build their team? Obviously, they do. That's why they're posting the job. We turn the webinar into an online class. Some people don't like to attend webinars, so let's mix it up. Let's turn it into an online class. So, Here's a video of me teaching what I basically teach on the webinar, and at the end of it, I say, hey, if you've watched me this whole time, it's probably because you want to build your own rock star digital marketing team. If that's the case and you got a team of, you know, three, you know, five or more people, sign up and, and let's talk about it. You just download our Modern Marketing Growth Plan. Now that you know how to structure and organize your team, note that the pitch never changes. Note that the conversation is always nearly identical. This also makes scaling your sales team about a billion times easier because they're always having more or less the same conversation. The heavy lifting of initiating the conversation is done on the front end. Let's look at some more examples. Kate Spade. Kate Spade ran this ad. We're running a surprise Black Friday sale, 75% off. What I loved about the ad is when you clicked on it, it took you to a page, this was in mobile, that said, subscribe to enter the sale. They didn't just say, here's a coupon, go buy some stuff. They had them subscribe to enter the sale. We call this a velvet rope offer. Subscribe to enter the sale. Now, why would they do that? Because then they're able to say, hey, now that you've entered our Black Friday sale, why don't you put that discount code to good use with, use with this amazing purse? Since you did this, this is the next logical step. Since you said you wanted this as a result of your actions, then I'm going to make this recommendation. I'm going to prescribe this solution to you because I know you want this thing which indicates you want this ideal after. What about carpet cleaners? 
now that you've had me remove that disgusting pee stain from your rug, why don't I just clean the rest of your carpet since I'm already here? Right? If I'm a carpet cleaner, I don't sell carpet cleaning. That's a big commitment. I sell spot removal. We'll do spot removal for 20 bucks. Hey, since I'm already here, I already got the adorable little plastic booty things on. Let's do this. We're in the survival and preparedness space, so we sell survival lighters and matches. Why? So that we can say, hey, you just got a survival match, and that's great, but the ability to create fire is just one part of a five-part survival and preparedness plan. Right? You're also going to need water and food and personal defense and shelter. If you'd like to get these other things, you should join this or you should invest in this. Since I know you want this as a result of your previous action, I'm going to recommend this as the next logical step. It's obvious. It's a continuation of a process that they began. It's a response to a conversation and to a question that they asked. It's not trying to start a new one. We were in the menswear and apparel market for a period of time. It's a terrible business. Very skew intensive. Uh, don't recommend it. But when we were in it, we were really good at acquiring customers. How? We sold cufflinks. In fact, we basically gave them away for free. Why? Because if you're buying cufflinks, you probably own a French cuff shirt. If you own a French cuff shirt, you probably wear suits. Can't help but notice that you just got these cufflinks. I'm guessing you wouldn't have got cufflinks unless you got a French cuff shirt. If so, why? Right? My business partner, Perry, built uh, the largest candle supply company in North America because he sold wicks. Because people don't buy replacement wicks for candles they already have. If you're buying a candle wick, it's probably because you want to make a candle. Hey, I can't help but notice that you just bought a crap load of candle wicks. Want to buy some other candle stuff? Guessing you want to make a candle. You got this dude on eBay. Sells a hundred pack of guitar picks. I've never bought a guitar pick. You know why? I don't play the guitar. But if you're buying them 100 at a time, I'm guessing you do. This guy just happens, in, in addition to selling guitar picks, also sells really, really, really expensive antique guitars. And he's able to say, I can't help but notice that you just bought a metric butt ton of guitar picks. I'm guessing that means that you own more than one guitar. Would you like to buy, oh, 13 more? See how this works? When her got junk, talked about them earlier, the way that they were able to really blow up their, their franchise in a good way Stop selling, hey, call us and we'll come out and pick up all your junk. And instead they say, hey, do you have one of those funky old TVs? You know, the flat screen's really the new thing. If you've got one of those big old, you know, cathode ray tube TVs, we'll come pick up that TV for just 20 bucks. Give us a call. We'll come pick up the TV for just 20 bucks. You know what they found when they arrived there? The people that had the old funky TVs, they had other junk too. The average trip value did not decline at all, but their call volume skyrocketed. Because they're able to say, hey, since you've already, you're already in the junk removal mindset, what if we get this other stuff? Great, I'm in. If I'm a personal trainer, I don't sell lifting weights, I sell a juice cleanse. Let's get this thing started, give me seven days. If I'm a web designer, I don't sell web design, I sell logos. I wanna sell somebody a logo. If I'm a dentist, I'll sell teeth whitening. I got someone in the chair, I know that they're cosmetically minded. Your teeth are pearly white, but they're really crooked. You want us to fix that funky grill? If they say no, you gas them and steal their wallet. If I'm a roofer, I sell gutter cleaning. Because if I'm a roofer, who do I want to be talking to? Homeowners. You know what homeowners have? Roofs. And where would I like to have this conversation? I'd like to have this conversation standing on their roof, preferably pointing at a hole or at an area that's about to cave in and say, we need to get this roof replaced. Good way to get paid to do that is to clean their gutters. What's well, an entry point offer that is going to put you talking to the exact right person in the exact right moment, at the exact right time, talking about the exact right thing. So the job of an entry point offer, heck, I'd argue the job of marketing in general is not to close a sale. Its job is to start an ideal sales conversation. Don't ask yourself, how can I close more sales? Ask yourselves, how can I optimize the number of ideal sales conversations we're tracking? It's a metric that we track at Digital Marketer. Other people look at cost per click, look at CPC as cost per click. We track cost per conversation. How much does it cost us to have an ideal sales conversation? That's our CPC. The framework that we've established to kind of architect this whole thing we call it a predictable selling system. We think about it in that first stage as the what's the triggering event? 
Meaning, what's the thing that happens that causes them to either put them in that before state or recognize that they're in a before state? Don't sell to people who don't realize they need what you have to sell, even if you think they need it. If they don't, move on, talk to somebody who knows they need it. So what's that triggering event? What happened? What's going on in their life that would cause them to look for it? Then what's a requesting action? What's an area where you can get them to, to make an agreement? That second box, that's where we think about what's our entry point offers. What are the entry point offers that get them to make that requesting action? That get them to start that conversation? That's the second step. Then we want that to roll into our ideal sales conversation where the sale is positioned not as something totally out of left field but as the obvious next step in which case the sale should happen automatically. This, by the way, going back to our step one, draw the circle, step two, just draw the freaking owl, is how we have been able to uh, take the art of offer creation and turn it into more of a science. This predictable selling framework is the thing that, that we've introduced that you guys now, uh, that, that you guys now have, a, have an understanding of. Placing that between the, the obvious first step and the conclusion, that's what you need. We just finished a workshop called Let's Build a Predictable Selling System. I believe this is something that every single business must have. Every business must be able to answer the question, how are you going to go about acquiring customers predictably and profitably? If you don't have a good answer to that question, then how do you know that you're going to be in business a year from now? If you can't say, well, this is how we acquire customers on a repeatable basis, profitably. As long as you're acquiring new customers predictably and profitably, you kind of can't go out of business. You're good. Growth is automatic. So creating a predictable selling system, some people in the past, we used to refer to them as funnels. How many of you guys have heard us talk about a funnel? Funnel is very tactical. Funnel covers a couple of stages in the middle. This is way more expansive. It thinks about how do we generate the awareness in the beginning? How do we take them all the way th through to their successful conclusion? Um, like I said, we just finished this, this workshop. I'm very, very proud of it. It is not, come on, clicker. Uh, it was six core modules. It's now been put online so that people can access 24-7. Got a lot of cool printable handouts and worksheets. Here's the biggie, though. We took all of the different templates that we have, all of our different copy templates, um, all of our campaigns, all of our predictable selling system, whether it's a webinar-based predictable selling system, the Velvet Rope, campaign that I showed you before, uh, the predictable selling system that we used to, to bring people into lab and all of others, and we've put it all in there. All the templates, everything that we got, plus we built out a coaching group at Digital Marketer, so we also give people going through these workshops private one-on-one -on -one access if they need it to a Digital Marketer coach to help them with the implementation. Uh, the investment on this is 1995. The event offer that we're making is $14.95, uh, 500 bucks off, but here's the really cool thing. Um, there's a way to get it totally for free. Um, I think that this is critical training. I think it's something that everybody needs, but I also believe that without a team that knows how to do the implementation once this is in place, it's going to be hard to move forward. So our goal at Digital Marketer, some of the things we're working on the good folks at Infusionsoft on is is really how do we get Digital Marketer HQ out in the hands of more businesses? We believe that if you have a team of people who wake up every single morning asking, our, asking themselves, okay, how am I going to grow this business, that your business is going to grow, and we're going to be able to achieve our mission of helping 10,000 businesses double um, by, by 2020. So we want to kind of make this a no-brainer. So if you're interested in giving Digital Marketer a, uh, HQ a try, Digital Marketer HQ starts at $295 a month to train up to five people on your team. Get them access to all eight of our, actually nine now, of our certifications. Everything from customer value optimization, content marketing, paid traffic and customer acquisition, social media, email marketing, search marketing, analytics and data, optimization and testing, and we just released one on e-commerce. So these are kind of the critical disciplines that you need to know if you want to get really, really good at digital marketing. Up to five people on your team get access to all of them so that you can cross train. If you're a member of Digital Marketer HQ and if you need more than that, we can certainly talk about that as well. It has a manager's portal so that as the manager, you can look in and see how everybody's doing. You can add and delete users. If somebody leaves your team, cool. Move them, drop somebody else in, no additional charge. It decide, lets you decide who takes which training. So if you want somebody to be able to take all of them, great. If you only want to be able to take some of them, that's fine too. And it lets you track how they're doing. Did they pass or fail the test? 
As a manager, it lets you know objectively whether or not somebody actually knows what the heck they're doing before you give them a login to your Twitter account, which is probably a good thing to do. And even warns you if somebody just skims the training. This is a new feature that we added, and it really ticked off certain people, but managers loved it. Uh, and we've got happy users of all shapes and sizes, literally uh, companies as big as Uber, um, as well as the team here at Infusionsoft have, are training their teams on, uh, on our platform. So we're very, very, very proud of it. We also help HQ members recruit talent. I mentioned the, uh, the different uh, hiring guides that we have available uh, and the job board. HQ members get free access and premium access to those as well. So what we're doing is uh, anybody who comes by the digital marketer booth and takes an annual uh, trial, or uh, not trial, actually, it's not, you can do a trial, I suppose, but if you sign up for Digital Marketer HQ on an annual basis, $29.95 for the year, we're going to go ahead and throw in Let's Build a Predictable Selling System um, for free. So that's how you can get that. If you just want to pick up Predictable Selling System, cool. If you don't want to do any of that, that's cool as well. So here are your kind of final action items. Identify your prospect's ideal after. Where do they want to go, and how are you going to take them there? Craft a 30-second sales pitch for your product or service. Write it down. Give it to your copywriters. Give it to your salespeople. You will use this again and again and again. And then finally, architect your ideal sales conversation. Think it through. All right? Think it through. And the bonus action item, get your team trained so they do all this stuff so you don't have to. It's a whole lot easier. All right? Uh, thanks so much for your time and attention. I'll be uh, answering questions for a little bit, and then I'll head over to the DM booth. So if you're interested, uh, we're here. Come, come talk to us. We'd love to meet and talk to you. Uh, and if you're, again, an agency and want to hang out with us tonight, go check that out as well. Thanks so much, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the uh, conference.